Well, first of all, I just thank Ashley, Ashley mm. Lehman, who um, is the founder and director of uh, and trustee of the Orang Utang Foundation uh, for hosting this interview. And of course, a big, big thank you to Bruce for making time such a, a busy schedule leading up to the release of Tawai, A Voice from the Forest, uh, to do this interview. So thank you, Bruce. It's Not at all, Charlie. Thank lovely you. having the gang here as well. <laughs> and Doug on camera, and Ruby, and Ruby Reed, and, and Ashley. <laughs> uh, thank you. And Ash Ashley's lovely home. So thank you all. Um, obviously, it's been a labour of love. I know this has been going on for some time. Don't even ask. You don't even ask. Uh, but I am going to ask you. <laughs> okay. Why did you undertake this kind of film, which is a little bit different to mm. the ones you've done before, where you you sort of thrown yourself in, sort of physically? It's been a. It's almost been a, a sort of a test of overcoming fear in a way. It's almost a, a fear of the other and getting to know all these extraordinary people and the, the relationships that you developed with them was was wonderful and incredibly life affirming for all of us to watch. And what made you decide to do a more reflective uh, film that started this kind of you know, searching film? Sure. Well, thank you, firstly. Um, <clears throat> the, the main reason I chose to do this was because it was, my, it was where I was at. It was where I was at. You know, like I, when I went and lived with all those indigenous peoples, I, I learned so much. And, and then you, can, you can't put it all in the show. And so I felt that there was certain elements that I was learning that I wasn't actually really getting across. And I felt that I owed it because it was, I owed it to the audience and I owed it also to the indigenous peoples to like tie that knot up a little bit more to finish that reciprocal relationship that we had to be able to express more deeply what I thought that they had to offer us. Um, and the reason that that was so pressing on me was because after I lived the, the series of Tribe, I went off to go down the Amazon and that film was essentially about globalization. And then I went around the Arctic, which is much more about climate change. And, and so <clears throat> when the BBC said, okay, well, you know, let's go and send you down the Mekong now and do all these other things, I, I soon realized that actually I couldn't just carry on going on business as usual, traveling the world, making these films, even though they were wonderful. And I was very, I, f I was honored and I felt the privilege of having that opportunity. It struck me that what I had seen through globalization and climate change I needed to act on in some way and it felt that I needed to make a different type of film that um, you know I just saw how pressing the the situation was and I for me to just carry on business as usual I just couldn't couldn't do that so I needed to make a film that in some ways answered to that and I thought that my experience of having lived with tribal people um, gave me some insights into other ways that we could live because ultimately this film is more about us and um, so I thought that uh, I thought that going going back to, to, to spend some time with indigenous peoples might give me uh, well might might allow me to go a little bit deeper than I had in my television stuff but also to give us some insights into other ways of being other ways that we can deal with these problems that, that uh, are clearly there on the horizon for us all and the Penan made a particular impact on you, didn't they? What, what was it about them? Yeah. Was that the, the last episode, that was the last one you were with. Was That's it? right. Yeah. yeah, so the series of Tribe, the Penan were the last group that I ever went to visit. Yeah. And it was really interesting because, like, you know, having been to 14 other indigenous groups around the world, I was becoming relatively um, confident at, at talking about indigenous issues, indigenous rights, also human nature and, and the things that I'd learned about uh, all these different ways of living. But when I went to the Penan, it was like I was suddenly, sh I was, it was like when I got there, um, it was like there was something completely different about them and then all the other groups I've been with and all the other people I'd ever been with in my life, it was like that different. It was a complete sea change and I couldn't put my finger quite on what that was. It was like they were incredibly different and it was really hard for me to articulate because I didn't want to romanticize but there was something that was really very very um, unique about that group and um, and so when I decided later to come back and make a film about our connection to nature um, 
and a different way of existing in society, they, they were clearly the group that shone out to me as the starting place for this, this journey. And what was the time difference between the last, that last episode with Tribe and then you going back? I don't back remember. It's about six or seven years, maybe more, maybe even ten. I don't remember exactly. It was quite yeah. a while. Yeah. But in that time, they had gone through their own massive transition. And I knew about that because I'd stayed remotely in touch. And so when I first met them, they were nomadic hunter-gatherers, literally carrying everything that they own on their backs, wandering through the forest. They, they, they have their own landscape, which is like a couple of valleys, but they're, but they're nomadic within that space. So they, they're, they're very much flowing with the rhythms of nature, seeing where the trees are fruiting, where the, the boar are herding. And so that was their way of living. But in that time, since when I first went and then when I chose to go back, they've now began to settle and turn to agriculture. So the sort of domestication um, and the manipulation of the environment was for the first time beginning to happen because they were being forced to because of the loss of their land from these uh, sort of uh, globalized forces. And I just thought that was an interesting time that in, in some way we've all been through. We've all been through that shift from um, nomadism and, and hunter-gatherer to agriculture and I started asking the question well, what happened to us during that transition and that became in, in a way the sort of the container of the film that's one of the questions the first questions that we ask and the Penan offer us that slight insight into that yes and I suppose actually I mean sadly it's if you went if you'd left it another six or seven years it would have changed greatly again. You may not have been able to have those sort of conversations that you wanted to... Well, in a, in a way, no. I mean, the, the fact that I managed to meet them before they had settled, yeah. um, and while they were still fully, fully hunting and gathering, that, that, that meant that whatever comes afterwards, that was all right. So even if I'd come back and they were now fully had left the forest, <clears throat> that was still going to be able to give me the insight, because I was lucky enough to have met them before. Yes. Um, but yes, you're right. I mean, the changes happening with all the indigenous groups that I've been with are, are radical. You know, people used to often come up to me after I made the first series of Tribe and go, you know, I love your show and thank you very much, but aren't you changing them by being there? Aren't you affecting them in some sort of way by, by being there? And of course, the answer to that is yes. You know, by us all traveling and intermixing, we are influencing each other on a, on a, a, in, a, in, a in a strong way quite often. But I used to... Um, I used to f also add to that, yeah, but compared to the other forces at play of the miners, the missionaries, the, yeah. the loggers, the, the government forces, whatever they are, they're, we're just a drop in the ocean um, because all of the indigenous groups are, are experiencing at the moment, or nearly all, a loss of land, a loss of rights, a lot of a loss of water issues and all the rest of it. So there's, there's real problems. And, and that's why we chose to go do our series in, in, in the Amazon, actually, was to yeah. highlight that. And I guess you have, you would have changed in that time too. Absolutely. Not, not just, yeah. So was that interesting? Yeah, what well, you as you can imagine, every time I went to go and live with another indigenous group, uh, you get to reflect on your own life through a different prism. Yeah. And sometimes you're very challenged by the way that another group sees the world or, or experiences how they relate to each other. And, and quite often I came up against things that really did challenge me very much. But by trying and seeing it in a wider context, you could understand why that might have come about. And through that process of trying to understand something, you often are able to see something about yourself. So the whole of my, the whole of my career has been one of reflection and, and, um, and re-evaluating my own place and my own, um, <clears throat> my own ways. But, um, but yeah, I, I also did take, like it took two years out after making the the Amazon series mm -hmm. and in that two years that's when suddenly like the flood of all the things that I had been receiving that's like on, on the crest of a wave surfing this lifestyle of like going to the jungle the desert the arctic and then coming back to Ibiza and meeting 20 people a day and having this very very fast-paced life of just receiving stimulation and information from all these places it was too much to assimilate so in that two years out I just wake up at night sometimes and just go with a memory of something and then just go, oh my God, that fits with that, fits with that, fits with that. And like, and then my own learning from my own personal journey of reflection, all of these things coming into a bigger picture and sort of taking shape in some way. Yeah.